we are now live on the live stream. And so we're going to go back to our presentation. Good morning. Good morning. Every morning we kind of drag, some drag in just a little bit later. Still got a minute. Still, let's see, we've got Easter. One of the things that we're going to be doing this morning as we work on the notes particularly <coughs> is working with the shared project where if you remember the other day you created a project and you shared it. And so you had one project, it was the, XX, the ZZXX99 um, project. So we're going to be using that project this morning. So if, um, if for some reason you, and, and, and what happened is you had a partner, and so one of, you're using one of yours, you know, you're only using one of them. So make sure you have your, your partner with you. Um, Jim, you and Chetty, I think, were sharing, right? You guys are, you guys are on the same project. And Ann and you and Dean were sharing. Caroline, who were you sharing with? Do you remember were you sharing with Paul when you did that? Neil, can you? Okay, can can you work with with Carolyn? Yeah. Um, Mary, were you with um, you were with Kaviti? So okay, and then Steve, if somebody else comes in, you were with Larry. Okay, so if he comes back in or or whatever, but if we can, um, you know, make sure make sure that everybody has a has a partner. Yeah. Yeah. So the the guys guys all of them all of them except the ones with the keys came. There you go. He's at least the key man. Right? That's right, the key man. All right. So everyone, so Neil, if you can just make sure that you and, and Caroline are sharing that, that project together. Um, while this is, while we're getting that ready, we're almost, almost ready to start here. Just want to make sure I've got my live feed going. And okay, looks like we are we are live. Let's um let's pray together this morning. Father God, I want to thank you for this opportunity to come and as we continue to learn about the tools that can help us to better um, take your word to the language of the people, Lord. I pray that you'd help us to um, have clarity, help us to understand, um, help us, Lord, to know what questions to ask and um, what things to focus on. I pray for those who, who aren't here yet. pray you get them here safely. And, uh, Lord, for those who are around the world listening, watching, Lord, I pray that you would um, pour out your spirit that um, we would be, again, better able to take your word to the, the nations of the world, the peoples of the world. And we thank you for this day. Thank you for your love and care. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we've got a couple more topics that we're going to focus on. Today we're going to start talking about notes. And then we're going to be, um, after the break, we'll talk about interlinear. After lunch, we'll talk about Bible modules. And at the end of the day, we'll talk a little bit about just the process of consulting. That's a little bit more of an interactive discussion with you all in terms of, of how that works. So we want to talk about notes. And let's get a few basic on notes. One of the most important things we've talked about this, these two weeks is the word communicate. Communicate, 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 and we can obviously do that in some ways best face-to-face, -face, okay? 
But how many of you have ever had a phone conversation with somebody and then gotten off the phone and said, now what was I supposed to do? I know, I know my wife said to pick up something at the store, but now did she say pick up one gallon of milk or two gallons of ice cream? I cannot remember. Okay. So if instead my wife sends me a text message, then I have something very concrete I can look at, and I also have history of what she said to me. So how do you keep track of notes? Well, again, I, I think most of us are now becoming familiar with the process of paratext notes, but there are still some out there who use other methods. And obviously one thing I could do is just write it down on, in a book. And that's the that's case. That's effective. If you know where your book is, that's good. But it's hard if you write it in a book to have somebody else see that, that book. Okay? You've got it. Nobody else does. Okay. One thing that we used to do, and some people maybe still do this, is that as you're working on your text, you just write in the text, you put some comment or note inside of parentheses or inside of square brackets or inside of braces, okay? And so you write this note in there, um, you know, make sure you change the spelling or here's an alternate suggestion for what happens. Why can that be problematic? Well, you don't have editing rights. Well, you might not have editing rights, but let's assume you do. Let's assume you have editing rights, so you can put that note in. You might forget it's there, and how do you highlight it? How do you bring it to the fore? You know, so, and, and one of the other issues is, is that if you put something in, in parentheses in your text, and then eventually you say, okay, well, we're going to make that change, and so you make the change, and you get rid of those parentheses, now you have no history of what you did except for the project history, which you could go back and look at. But, so it becomes much more complicated to try to, to keep track of what you've done, because you can do it, but there's, there's no ability to, to pull those things out easily. There's no um, easy way to keep a history of it. Some people, and we used to suggest this, create a whole new translation project. And in that whole new translation project, they just go side by side and they write, they write their notes. Okay, and so now you've got these, these notes. That certainly works, again. Um, and in fact, that was one of the ways we suggested doing this. And we even came up with a system of styles that were comment one, response one, comment two, response two. They had different colors, italic and bold and things. So you could kind of highlight and keep track of what's going on. But it becomes very cumbersome because when you're looking at this thing, one, you have no easy way to say, okay, we're done with that note. Let's get it out of our view. And so now you've got all these messages through here and, and trying to sort through, okay, which one do I actually need to deal with becomes problematic. And so you can do that. It also means now that you have to actually share two projects among everybody because one has your text and one has all your notes. And so you've got to be sharing both these things. Okay. So the best way to do this is to use the notes feature that is built into paratext. And again, a lot of people go, what notes feature? I didn't know you, I didn't know you could write notes in paratext. And so this is a really powerful tool that allows us to actually make comments in the text that are not part of the text. So everything, every time I make a comment in the text, it shows up as flagged, but it does not, it's not part of the text. So when I print the text, when I do anything else, it doesn't show up there in that. Okay. So as you're working on a project, what kinds of things might you write notes about? What do you mean? Uh, how they're handled in the translation. Okay, so when you come across something that's a rhetorical question, you might ask, you might want to ask a, a comment, you might want to put a note and say, how are you going to handle this? 
Okay. Okay, so we're, we're live streaming over there. Turn off the live stream, Dean. <laughs> it's awkward to hear myself talking 30 seconds after I say something. Okay, so what other things do you, when you're, when you're working with a team, Katie, come on, you're a consultant, what do you write notes about? What, do you, what kinds of things do you... Exegetical problems. Okay, issues of exegetical. I write notes about grammar and discourse. Okay, if there's questions about the grammar of the discourse... S formatting, spelling, basically anything. Anything, basically it becomes anything you see. Okay, so as you're going through the text and you say, okay, I notice an issue here, there's an opportunity to do one of two things. One, if you can fix it and you know the right fix, then, then you can do that. But if you don't have editing rights, you're the consultant, you don't have rights to do that, then <laughs> you can write a note. <laughs> What are you doing, Dean? <laughs> why, 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 are you, why are you watching my live stream, Dean? You're here. Not even the current one. Why are you watching? Why are you watching a video of what I did yesterday, Dean? I'm here. I'm here. We're talking. Oh, Dean. Okay, so you you basically you can write notes about anything. Now you don't want to just one of the concerns. That, that I want to start off and mention is, is that notes add to the size of a project. So if you write a note about literally everything, your project's going to start getting big. So you want to use notes wisely. You don't want to just comment, okay, this period's wrong, this period's wrong, this period's wrong, this period's wrong. You might want to say, check your periods. Okay? Well, yeah. But depends. It, it depends on the context, depends on the team. Put, put, yeah, pushing back on that, it, it, if it's a very new team learning, you put lots of notes in right. because you want them to learn. If it's a much more mature team, you expect to not write as many notes. Okay, so I don't know if on the tape you hear that, but comment being, but with a new team, you may need to write more notes. With a mature team, as the team matures in their skill, you may not have to write as many. You might be able to write one note and say, Check all the, the, check all the uh, markers in this chapter. Check your quotation markers, and that one note may suffice. With a new team, you may need to be much more specific and say, here's a marker you need to consider, Here, and directive, here's a marker you need to consider. Some of this depends on the relationships of the consultants, the team, how the team works together. Is it just consultants writing notes to teams? The team can write the notes back to the consultant. The teams can write notes to each other. It all goes back to this idea of communicate. Okay? And the thing about notes is that it gives us a very clear way to communicate where that communication lives with the project. Okay? It gives us a way to communicate that lives with the project. If, if I, I could say, well, okay, I'm going to do the same thing in an email, and I'm going to just write emails, and and again, I've got teams that do that, and they say, okay, well, the, the, the translator writes notes to the, the consultant, and that's okay, but the problem is it's divorced from the project. And so now the translator has to go open up their email, and when they go to their email, it says, okay, there's an issue in, in Matthew 3.8, so now they've got to go to Paratext and open up Matthew 3.8, and they, you know, and it, whereas with the notes feature, everything is tied together. And so we have this really good way of coordinating what we're doing. Okay. When you insert a note in paratext, by default, it highlights wherever your cursor is touching. So you don't have to necessarily highlight a whole bunch of text. You can, and we'll see that. But wherever your cursor is, when you insert the note, that text will get highlighted if it's in front or back of the spacing. So whatever you insert, okay. And if you touch the verse number, then the entire verse will be highlighted for your notes. So let's, let's go to paratext for a minute. And we're going to be using today the ZZ um, initials test. So I happen to be, I happen to be a member of 
Jim's um, project. So I'm going to be looking at Jim's project as well. So Jim and Chetty and I are all going to be working on that project together. And so if, if I go to the text, and I'm going to, how can I make my letters bigger? How can I make my, my words bigger here? Control plus or equals will zoom me out. So I'm going to zoom out just so we can see better. Okay. So I'm looking at this uh, word, the book of the genealogy, and I've, I've got a question about that phrase. If I highlight the whole phrase, okay, if I highlight the whole phrase and choose insert note, okay, if I choose insert note, then what this is going to do is put a note into paratext that is linked to whatever I've highlighted. In this case, I highlighted that whole phrase. And so when it comes up, you'll notice that paratext has taken a part of the text. Basically, it takes, it takes from one marker to the next marker. It takes a part of the text, and it highlights what I highlighted. Okay? And I could write a comment there. I'm going to cancel that. If all I wanted was the book, right now my cursor is in the word book. My cursor is in the word book, and if I click insert, note, then book is automatically highlighted. I don't have to highlight that word. I can just click it, click in the word, and it will be highlighted. And that's true if my cursor is at the beginning. Because my cursor is touching the word book, book is going to be highlighted. If my cursor is over one place, if my cursor is at the end of the, so that the is what's touching, then when I insert this note, it's going to be the word the that's highlighted. So whatever my cursor is touching, that word is going to get highlighted. I can only... I can only be touching one word. I can be I can highlight a whole phrase. So if I want a whole phrase, if I want a whole phrase to be highlighted in bold, I have to select it. If I only want to have a word highlighted, I just have to touch it. And if I put my cursor and touch the verse, whether it's in the beginning or the end of the verse, if I touch the verse and insert the note, then the entire verse gets highlighted. Okay. There's a lot of strategies in how I write a note. I think we've already talked about this. I can't remember now if it was Katie or Ann. One of you, I think, mentioned that when you write a note, you like to highlight and copy all that text into the note so that it's in the note itself, too, and then make your, your comments about it. So how you, what you write in the note, again, is going to depend on a number of factors. What kind of note it is, what you're trying to accomplish, um, what you, information you want them to do. Ann? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things about writing notes. Um, well, I don't know if you want me to get into it or not. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> Let me get closer so that this is picked up on the... Number one, if you're consulting from uh, a distance, like if you're remotely consulting, you want to handle one, one point per note. If you stack them up, the team is going to see one of those and miss the others. So don't ever put more than one question in a note. That means you sometimes have three or four flags about the same thing with the same bit of information highlighted. Katie's nodding her head. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a whole nother, I mean, you may see the question, rhetorical question, and just you know, put rhetorical question, question mark in the note, but the team has no idea what you're responding. So you have to be clear and concise what, you, what you're highlighting the problem and how you want them to discuss it to find the solution. Very good. And, and, but that's true, that's true of our communications in general. You know, how many times have you written an email to somebody and asked five questions yeah. and they answer two? They saw my question, they acted on it, and they corrected the text, but they didn't tell me what they did. Right. And, and other teams will write, 
Yes. <laughs> and you say, yes, what? And, and, and we'll, right, and so we're going to look at some of that, but, yeah, but yes, you want, this, this, this is communication. And so, sh should, should I put this in here or not? Yes. Okay. Yes, put it in there. Is this, a, is this a common way of expressing emotion in your language? Well, no, that one's clear. Enough. But, but, but yes, the, the sometimes, again, answering yes or, or just saying, okay. You know, is this a, is this a common way of, answer, of, of expressing this in your language? Okay. Okay, what? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. You know, what, what's the answer? So, so we want to communicate. And so, and so obviously, that goes on, on, on my side as I write a note. It also goes on the other side of, of teaching the team. But, but this becomes a place of teaching the team what you want. Because one consultant might say, all I want you, just say yes, you did it. You know, that's fine. So one, somebody else may say, I want you to tell me I did this change. Okay. So what you put is important, but we're going to talk about how I can find out what might have happened even if they didn't give me all the information. Okay, there's ways to find it, but, but, so, but so we want, part, of this, part of this is a communication process. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about what, what I write here, okay? Um, because again, quite honestly, that's, that's a level that's beyond the, kind of the technical of it. What I want to talk about is how we do how we do this process. And so from my testing, again, we can write careful notes. These aren't real notes we're doing right now. Okay? These aren't real notes. So I'm not going to worry about being really careful. What I want to see is, is, is how we can go back and forth. So, so I'm writing a note to Jim and Chetty. Those, those guys are on my team. I'm writing a note, you know, what do we do about this? Okay, maybe not the best communication. I'm not. I, I'm. I'm not worried about that. But but what I want us to what I want to see is okay. I'm I'm asking them. I'm asking them. What do we want to do about this? And I've highlighted. I've highlighted the whole thing. Um, doesn't you know? Doesn't seem clear. or Whatever. Okay. So I I, I write my question, my communication to the team. One of the things that I can do down here is I can specifically assign this to a member of the team. So I could say, I want this to go to Jim. He's the, he's the administrator. I want him to deal with this. Or if Chetty was the one who was translating this book, I might say, I want to, I want to assign this to Chetty. Or I could assign it to the whole team okay, and say the whole team is going to get this particular note. If I assign it to Chetty and click OK, does Chetty have that note? Why not? Because I have to send and receive it. Okay, so again, part of the communication involves whatever process we're using to share this project. And so if we're sending it over the internet, then before Chetty's going to ever see that, I have to do a send and receive. So I can write a note by selecting the place in the text where I want to include a note. I want to write a note about David. I, I can click somewhere in the note and choose insert note. There's some other ways to get at this. I can right click and use insert note. I can use a shortcut. If you write lots of notes, then you might want to learn the shortcut, but Again, it's up, it's, everybody works a little differently. But I'm going to go to Insert, Note. When I do that, it comes up. That word is highlighted. I can start typing my note. When I'm writing notes, Paratext gives us a few, very few limited formatting issue options. Up at the top I see a B and an I, standard Windows type things for bold or italic. Um, you know, so is this the correct name? I thought we were using 
And then I can turn on bold and italic. I thought we were using David. Okay, so I can, I can add a little bit of formatting to my note if I want something to stand out. There's also an option here that shows the ability to choose a different language. That doesn't automatically make it type in Greek. What it does is it says if I'm in, if I choose a different language, as so I can choose Greek, then it chooses the font that Greek is using, and if I have a keyboard that will type that, then I can type in Greek, or I could type in Devanagari or, or whatever language. So I can choose, I can choose to use alternate languages, and it will pull up that particular font for me. Um, but I'm going to just stick with where I'm at. Again, I can assign it. One of the things to note about assignments is that the moment you assign one note, then Paratext is going to assume that your next note goes to the same person. So you want to be careful as you're making assignments that if this note needs to go to Jim, that I need to be very particular about assigning it so that it goes to him. Okay. So, I've got one note that's written to, to Chetty, one note that's written to David, or to Jim. I'm going to write one more note on the word father. Sometimes I just automatically double click. Okay. And in this case, I'm going to assign it to the whole team so that we can have a discussion about it. One of the things I want you to notice here is my flags. The one I sent to Chetty is gray. The one I sent to Jim is gray. The one I sent to the whole team is red. What does that tell you? The Colors, colors indicate who it's assigned to in terms of gray. We'll look at the note tags. There's actually three possible default colors for flags, red, purple, and blue. If it's assigned to you, whether it's assigned as specifically you, you know, so it's assigned to my name, or it's assigned to team, of which I'm part of the team, or if it's assigned to unassigned, if it's not assigned to anybody, all three of those situations would make the flag red for me. If it's assigned to the team, then all three of us would see red flags. If it's unassigned, all three of us would see red flags. But if it's assigned to somebody else, then you're going to see a gray flag, and they will see the color. This becomes really useful because I can look at this very quickly and say, okay, there's a number of notes here. There are, there are three notes in this section, but only one of them is one that I need to particularly pay attention to. Now, there's an assumption in that. The assumption is that whoever assigned it, assigned it correctly. And not that when I was writing these notes, you know, Jim, Jim's over here looking and saying, okay, all my notes are gray, so I guess I don't have anything to do. Well, it might be that I, I meant the first one for Chetty, and I signed it to him, and then I just kept assigning him, and, and actually, some of them were there. Okay. So at some point, somebody has to look at the note and see. Ann? That's true, but I, uh, realistically, you probably wouldn't have different assignments to individual people within um, a chapter because then you get double editing, and then you get the, pr pro the problem of conflict. So I would not expect that you would assign a note to Chetty and a note to Jim in the same chapter. Well, okay, here's my thinking on this, why I did this. First of all, right now, nobody has editing rights to this book at all. <laughs> so, so the notes can go to anybody. But, but let's say Chetty had the editing rights. So my first note I wrote to Chetty because I want him to change it. Jim is the one who's handling our 
biblical terms, issues and things on this word. So I'm sending it first to Jim because he's the one who's handling that. And then he may look at the note and say, okay, Chetty, fix this. So again, notes can be used a variety of ways. You may be right. You may be right in practical terms. In a particular chapter, you may be writing most of those to one person. But because different notes can have different purposes, I may want to say, okay, take a look at this. You know, what do you, what do you think? A lot of dynamics. A lot of dynamics are possible. So we're not saying this is how you do it. Say, these are some things that you can do. So what I'd like you to do is on your team, go ahead. We're going to bring up the exercise here. Go ahead and do a send receive with your project. So make sure you've got your latest data on your, on your project that you're sharing. Do a send receive. Write five notes. Be creative. Don't write them all in the same chapter. Go to different places and write five notes in the project that you're sharing. And then do a send receive. Write five notes in your project, do a send receive. If you're watching this online, you may not have a partner. In this case, you can do this with. You could just write notes in a, in a project. Just You can spread them around ZZ Test 99 or whatever. You can write some notes. So you want to go, you want to write five notes, five notes in the project. Yeah, and don't, don't stress a lot about what should I write a note about. Pick a word, pick a word, write a, a note. The note could be just three words. Okay. I know. Make it four words then, Ann. Make sure they're funny words. Can we assign them or just leave them unassigned? Doesn't matter. You can assign one, you can leave it unassigned. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go take this off the screen a minute so that I can continue writing my notes. So if I leave it unassigned, it will go to my, all my partners. It'll go to everybody. Well, it's going to go to everybody, but it's going to, who's going to see the red flag? Yes. And after you write, after you write five notes, after you've written five communications, go ahead and um, do a send receive. Do a send receive and let your partner know that you're done.
notes you do? You do five. Do five notes. You got five done, Dean? All right, good job. Up in heaven. You're up in heaven, waiting for waiting for waiting for your partner. She's writing more extensive notes. Mary, you got five notes? Okay. 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 We're in find and replace, so let's cancel this. Okay. So, okay. So you want to write a note? Let's write a note on the word refers. So click it. Click on the note. Click on the word. Uh huh. Then click on insert. And the top is note. Okay. Now you write a comment. Doesn't mean it. Just put a couple words. Just type a couple words. Just put the word note. Note one. Okay, and then click OK. Okay, and do the same thing some other places. You got them, Katie? Harrison, you got them? Jim? Okay. You must be writing extensive notes, too. You, you guys, because you you I know, it's fun. Notes, are, notes writing are fun. So, got it? Okay, we got it. Okay, Mary, do you have yours done? Do one more for him and then just do a send and receive and we'll. Okay, okay so, again, the, normally, you know, this, this process is happening because you're going through and you're working through the text. So, as you're working through the text, you, you come across something that, that needs to be looked at. So you do a send receive, and if you do a send receive, you should actually know that your partner sent notes because the list would tell you that your partner sent notes. Okay, how can you find those notes if you're just looking for the flags? Is it easy? You could page through the entire New Testament. You could page through the entire New Testament looking to see if there's a note. Obviously, if I'm working in Matthew chapter 5, then that would be where I'd look for my notes from my consultant. You can see the consultant sent you an email to say, I put some notes in the text at such and such and such a Okay, so the, if, the, if, the tra if the consultant wrote to you and said, I did these notes and they're, they're here, you could go find those. But just looking for flags, looking for flags is, is definitely a little bit tricky. So I'm going to go to back to paratext and I'm going to do my send and receive. And remember, I can always hit the icon to do whatever my last send receive was. When I do that send receive, I should find out that um, Curtis and so Jim and, and Curtis both sent notes okay that, that tells me they both did notes okay so I got notes from both those guys but it doesn't tell me where those notes reside I can click on the drop down arrow and it still doesn't tell me where the notes are it doesn't tell me what book they're in anything else all it tells me is there are notes so I can start looking and I see a flag here, but this is a note I wrote, it, it would become next to impossible for me to just kind of flip through randomly looking for notes. That was a note I wrote. Okay. Now, here's a note somebody wrote. Okay, gee, I found a note somebody wrote. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I can randomly kind of be flipping through and I might come across flags. That's not a very productive way to locate notes because I'm really guessing. And in this case, is this note, just by the flag, is this note written to me? No, no it's, not even, it's not a note written to me, so I don't necessarily need to worry about it. Okay. We'll deal with where the notes are in a minute, but If I find a flag that is a note assigned to me, I can double click on that flag 
So if you found one note, whether you wrote it or somebody else wrote it, doesn't matter. If you find a flag, if you double click on that flag, that will open the note back up. Okay? So our communication can continue because somebody wrote one comment, and whether it's a comment that I wrote or somebody else wrote, I can comment again because Paratext is going to open another line for it. And so I can say, this is note number four. Yep. Looks. A note. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Right. What does the little box indicate? The little box indicates that this note is unread. Yes, and it's colored yellow. And it's colored yellow. So when you see a flag that has a box around it, then it tells you this is a note that you've not read before. Once I open that note once, then that little box will disappear because the note has been read um, at least once. Thank you, Ann. So I can write a comment. I could change the assignment if I needed to and click OK. So now I have continued the conversation because I've received a note from somebody, or in this case it's a note that I wrote in the first place, but I, I found a note. If I open that note, write a comment. Now, this note is actually assigned to James. Okay, it's assigned to Jim. It says that. Can I write a note on a comment written to Jim? Yeah. Okay. That doesn't change. Even though it's written to Jim, I, I could come in here and say, you know, I agree. You know, I could come in and, and add my two cents worth to the comment. Again, we, want to, we don't want to use comments frivolously because this does continue to add to the size of the project. Okay. But if I have a note and I see the flag, I can simply click on it and add an additional comment to the conversation. Yeah, it was, okay, the box around me is unread, but I thought the red flag meant that it was assigned to you, but it was assigned to me, but it was red for you. No, this one was gray. I'm on this blessed. That other one that I opened was 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 a red flag for me. Also no, that was another. The first note that I was looking at, the first note that I looked at was one that I had oh, okay. from. Okay, yeah, yeah, it was for me. So, so the so I can write an additional comment. So, what I want you to do is go back, look and see if you can find see if you can find a note somewhere whether it's one you wrote or whether it's some one that your partner wrote, find a note and write one more comment in it and then do a send receive again. Yes, ma'am. Even though you say um, the cost, uh, no, I don't want to say. Sometimes it's good to write positive notes. Yes. And, and commend the team on something well done. Yes. Yeah, and, and so Anne's, Anne's comment is, is that this is a really good place to use positive feedback as well. And so I, I'm writing and saying, okay, yeah, Jim, you need to fix this, but I might want to be writing a note saying, wow, great translation. Or great catch. Good, good job catching that. That was, that was you, you found something that we needed to, to look at. Great job. So this is a place, again, communication this is a place that you can use communication to, to do that. Positive feedback is one of those things, for those of you who are into the five love languages, there are certain people for whom that is very much a, one of their high love languages. Um, this is a really great place to express that. Okay? It's harder to express touch with these comments. But, but this is a place where you can communicate. The whole idea is to communicate and use this as a, a way to inform and, and encourage and move it on. So we can do these notes, but again, obviously you're only going to get them when I do a send receive. If I don't send receive these notes, you're not going to get it. And if we both kind of do send receive at the same time, 
I'm going to get your notes, but you're not going to get mine until you do another send receive. Okay. So, so if we kick resolve, it goes away? We'll, we'll deal with resolve in a minute. What? I did not tell you how to find them. So, but you know what, where you wrote notes, right? Do you remember? So find one that you wrote. Okay. If you can't find your partner's notes, find one that you wrote. Now, go ahead and write a com another comment, send it back, do a send. There are other things that you can do when you're looking at those notes. If, if yours is the last comment and you realize that you said a really sarcastic comment that really you don't want to go to the team, you can delete your last comment. I can never delete a comment made by somebody else, but in Christian love, I can say, you know what, I'm going to take what he said and I'm not going to, I'm not going to hold that. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to expect the best. So I'm going to assume that, you know, maybe when he said this really mean thing, he was just tired or he's not understanding what I did. But if I realize that I said something that I shouldn't, when I'm on the comment line, there is a red X that allows me to delete the last comment that was written. Notice that's only on the last comment. Even though I wrote both of the comments up there, there's no X. I can't delete something way up. I can only delete the last one. But if I delete the last one, then the next one becomes the last one. And if you decide you want to delete the whole note, you have to keep deleting all the way to the top. So I would have to delete this note and say, yes, that comment's gone. This is not, this, we'll talk about resolving. This is not resolving the note. This is just deleting it. So that note is gone. And I could do the same thing, and if I delete this next one, which is the first, that's the first comment, if I delete that, then the note will be completely removed. So I could completely remove a comment, a note, if I needed to. Mary, you're looking perplexed. Well, okay, that, that is, to me, that's not the last note. That's the last, all your communication before you send and receive? Or, I mean, no, well, in this, in this, in this particular note, this is, this box, this box contains a series of comments. Sometimes I use the word comment and note kind of interchangeably. So in this note, in this note that I wrote about father, right now there's one comment left. And so if I delete this last, this is the last comment that's visible. If I delete that comment, then that note is completely gone. Because that was the last comment that shows, it's visible. And now there's no record of that. That note is completely gone. Okay, so if I... Because when I do a send receive, everybody, it's going to be deleted for everybody. It will. Now, if you go to all your flags and say, oh, I you know, just didn't do things right today, and I'm going to <laughs> delete them all, you know, so... You could do you that, but, the last note. but the, each of these notes... On each of these notes, there are comments in that note. So if I, if I insert a note, this is, that's the first, right now, this is the first comment. Okay, so it's my first comment. But if I, I think about something and you say, I want to add something else. So you're saying you can delete the bottom the, all the time. You, yeah. If I wrote it, I can delete my comment. So if my comment is the bottom comment, I can delete it. I can't delete, well, and so in this case, in this note, if I open this, I can delete my comment, but I cannot delete Jane, the one that um, Chetty wrote. But if you had one... If I had one above, I couldn't get, I, can, I cannot, I, you, can, you, can, you, you, can only, you can only delete the last comment if it's yours. Okay. And if there's other comments, then you're, you're done. So, 
So if there was a series of discussions that we said, oh, this, this, was, this really was not loving, we, we really want to get rid of this, then I'd have to delete my comment, then Chetty would delete his, then Jim would delete his, and then I'd delete the last one, and we'd, it would be gone. Deleting comments is not something that I hear very often, no. but more, more likely what would happen, more likely what would happen is I write a comment, and then I go back and look at that and say, oh, you know what, he's probably not going to understand what I said. So I'm going to edit that comment because not only can I delete the last comment, but I can also edit if it's the bottom comment and it's mine. I can edit that bottom comment so that I could go back and say, okay, that really, that's not right. Let's, let's change that. Let me change the comment. So, so I can edit or delete the bottom comment if it's mine. Okay, can never change somebody else's. So I can communicate by using this, this tool. Okay. Now, Anne was raising the question, well, what happens if the person goes in and they, they go in and they look at that note and they say, hmm, okay, that's an interesting note, yeah. Um, and they, they stop from in there. So they go to the text and they say, okay, we're going to change this to, oh, huh, good, don't have editing rights, can't change it. Um, let me go to a book where I have editing rights. Do I have editing rights anywhere? I can look at my assignments in progress. And so when I look at my assignments in progress, my tasks don't show anything there and they don't show anything, in no, no previous and no next. So obviously my administrator hasn't assigned me anything that I can edit. He's a tough one. He's a tough one, so I'm not gonna be able, I'm not gonna be able to edit. So, so, so for purposes of this, so for purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to switch to a project where I have editing rights. I'm going to switch to a project where I have editing rights. That was interesting. Okay. So I have editing rights here. So I look at this word brothers, and let's presume that I got a note and said, Somebody sent a note that said brothers and sisters. Okay. If someone comes in and says, okay, yeah, that's good, brothers and sisters, they change it. But in the note, in the note, they write, maybe. Now, Again, you got to put your imagination cap on here because obviously I can kind of look at this and see what's changed. You know, I can see it's easily changed. But presume you're a consultant reading a language that you don't really understand, so you don't know what was written. And so you open this note, you open this note, and it says, maybe. Did, did they do anything? I, I don't know if they've changed something or not second and then I'll answer your question. But if I click on the show changes since the note was created, then it comes up and it shows me that brothers became brothers and sisters and so I can see, okay, they did change it, okay, they did change it and so I can now decide whether I want to do something else with the note. Right, right. Of course, again, the, the word brothers, the word brothers was, was there. Was, is there. I mean, the word brothers is highlighted. Yes, and you can compare that. And you can compare it. But yes, if I had, if I had copied the text in there, you know, but e either way, I can see the, the original note said all the brothers, and I can see that my note, my text now says brothers and sisters, so I can see that. But 
if I click on what's changed, then very quickly it shows me what has changed in the text, not only at that point, but any other point in the verse. So if they made some other change, I can say, oh good, you fixed that, that's a great job fixing that one right, but you also changed this part, and that, one, that, that one's really not supposed to say brothers and sisters because it's talking about Jesus' brothers, you know, and so we didn't want to, you know, or it's however we're doing it. So, so you, you can use this feature of what's changed in the text since the note was written to find out if there's been a change. Now, I'm happy I wrote a note that said, do this, and I'm happy. I could say, well, okay, now I can just delete the note. But if I delete the note, doing the, you know, deleting the comments backwards, if I delete the note, then I have no history of what's happened here. So when I'm content with the fact that this has been handled correctly, there's a couple things I can do. One is I could add my comment and say it became brothers and sisters or whatever comment I want to make to say it. And then I can also click on resolve in the lower left hand corner and what Resolve does is it basically hides that flag and says, okay, you've dealt with this issue. Okay, you've resolved it. It's important to be careful that you don't mix up Resolve with OK. Because I've had a number of teams where they write a note, they write a note and hit Resolve. And so they write the note and the note disappears and I don't know immediately that it's there. Or they resolve it before I get a chance to look at it and say, yes, you've done what was needed to be done. And this is another good example of why you as a translator would not, should not re probably resolve a note that a consultant has written. Because you made the change in the text, but your comment is maybe. So as a consultant, I'm going to say, uh, what do you mean? Right. Maybe. And then you make the change. Is it yes or is it no? You just right. right. So... So the question of who resolves notes is, again, one of those things that you need to communicate. And as a consultant, you need to be clear with the team, do you want them to resolve the notes when they fix it? Or do, they want, do you want them to fix it and then let you see the notes so that you can resolve that it was fixed adequately? Okay. So how it's resolved. But once we've decided, yes, this is done, I can write a comment, I hit resolve, and then that flag disappears. Okay. So let's do another exercise here real quickly. What has changed? So go to, go to a verse in the ZZX99 that you have rights to edit. So go to a place where you can edit. So if, it's, if, you're, if you've given your partner, if you're the administrator, make sure you've given your partner what do you mean? No, rights. The one you're sharing. The one you're sharing. The one you're sharing, the X9, XX99, the one you're sharing. The XX something. Oh, yeah. The ZZX, ZZXX99, ZZ Your Initials 99. ZZ Your Initials 99, the one you're sharing. Go to the one you're sharing and find a place where you can edit the text. Yeah, the one you're sharing. It, it's going to have your initials on it. Okay? And I want you to just do that exercise. Do that exercise. Go to place, write a note on a word, write a note on a word, close the note, make a change in the text of that verse, and then open the note again. You have to sign me a book? Yeah, actually, both of you I have as uh, Hebrews. Oh, Hebrews? Okay, great. Did you, or you, or you do now? Okay. Did, did you do that? With the user roles and permissions? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm wondering why you brought up another issue. Well, because I'm in, I was in the, the assignments, but in the assignments we hadn't gotten to a task that gave me that right yet. Okay. And this is, yeah, that's the issue of using assignments versus using user roles and permissions. That in, in the assignments process, then I'm only going to get rights when I'm at a task that requires me to have those rights. Do you have to go to no. That was, that was where we had the rights. Were we in Hebrews or where, what, where did you? So, so where you can edit. 
Okay, so, so Dean, you have the book of Hebrews, so you can go to, okay, so you can go to Hebrews. Okay, well, in this, you both have rights to Hebrews. So both go to Hebrews. Go to Hebrews. So, yes, you're in the same project. Go to Hebrews. Okay, go to Hebrews. Find a word. Write a note. Find a word, write a note. Okay, you're trying to figure out where you have editing rights? Yeah. Probably Hebrews. Mm -hmm. just, just close this. Go to the book of Hebrews. Go to the book of Hebrews, Mary. Hebrews. Okay, yeah. You both have editing rights. Okay. Um, well, you do. Mine says I do. You're in ZZKK. Okay. Um, oh, maybe a different chapter. Anyway. Okay, so pick a word. Pick a word. Write a note. Close the note. Don't write anything big, fancy. Just write a note. Close the note. Make a change in the text. Where In the verse where the note is. In the same verse. Okay. Open the note. Click the changed text. Verify that it shows you the text is changed. And then resolve the note. Everybody getting there? You got a note written? You looked at the, where the text has changed? If I highlighted something, why would I be getting invalid verse? Check that verse number is correct. Okay. Um, because, see, look up here. You've got a bad verse number up there. So you somehow that verse was edited. Uh, This again brings up the, the issue of running chapter verse check because if you've got bad chapters and verses, then it's not going to work right with text. So, I'm going to go to the book of Hebrews because that's where we had given everybody rights. Pick a word. Insert a note. Write a note. And then edit the text in that verse. It doesn't have to necessarily even be that particular text. But if it is that text, when I open the note again, the note itself doesn't tell me that the text has changed, but I can see what's changed since I wrote the note by clicking on the change, and I can see that, in fact, somebody did change fathers to dads. And so if I'm happy with that, I can, again, write a comment and say, okay, that's good, or that's right, or sometimes just correct, and then I can resolve that. I can resolve that note so that that flag goes away and we don't have to, to deal with it anymore. Okay. It's gone. Now, 
at this moment, we're looking for the note flags by simply looking for the flags, which is not very useful. So for those of you who've used the notes feature, how can I find all the notes that I've written? Okay. File, open, project notes. Okay, so let me have your attention up here. So when I'm working with these notes, it's, it's very difficult to simply look around for a flag because they could be anywhere. If we're talking about a whole Bible, they, you know, there's a lot of places their flag could be hiding. So what we want to use is a feature called the notes window. So under file, open notes, I can open a window that shows the notes for that project. By default, it's going to highlight that particular project that I have open. And I can open those notes and it will open. And we, we talked about this early on. Again, there's a filter. And I have to know what my filter is showing me. At this moment, the filter is showing me unresolved notes that are in the current chapter. If I said, I know that Jim and Chetty wrote notes and they could be in any book, then I might want to shift my filter to all books. And I'm in the wrong project because I'm in ZZ Test 99. So when I go to File Open, Notes, I can open the ZZ Test 99, but I can also select multiple projects so that I could actually see notes from more than one project. Now when I go to All Books, now I see that there are 15 notes in these projects. So whether I'm looking at one project or multiple projects, I can see those notes. One thing that happens here is if I look at a note that, okay, Jim wrote a note here in Galatians 2.20, I can see that Jim wrote it because it's got his name after the project, but it says, this is ZZJW, James wrote it on the 11th. If I click that reference, because that project was not opened, Paratext will open that project for me. So I can be looking at notes in a couple of projects, even if the project's not open, Paratext will open the project and it will take me to the place where that note is. Now, notice a couple things. One, I have a yellow box around the note in the text and the, it's hard to see on my yellow screen because my whole screen is yellow, but when I see those notes, I see the notes highlighted as yellow. You, should, you would see notes highlighted in yellow on your screen. That's an indication that those notes have not been read yet. Okay. Just to clean things up a little bit, I'm going to close the, this, and I'm going to just open up the notes for just this project again. So file, open notes, the ZZJW. Okay. So I see these notes. By default, every time I open the window, it's going to open it to current chapter. Unless I change the filter and I save my Windows combination. So if I save this combination with this view, then it will remember that I want to see all books and it will open all books. Or if I want current books, it'll save it to current books. When I'm in this mode, I have filters that are going on. If I wanted to find the notes that had been resolved, I can simply change my filter and say, show me the resolved notes. And now I can see the notes that were resolved. If I want to see the notes that have been unread and are assigned to me, notes that are unread and assigned to me, I could click that and these are the notes that I haven't read yet that are actually assigned to me personally. Or unresolved is the same thing. There's only one note that's unresolved that I, that I need to deal with. So I can filter this in ways that will allow me to see what are the notes that I need to deal with personally or what are the notes that we need to look at 
in a particular way. In the notes feature, there is a little arrow to the right here. This tells me, well, the number tells me how many comments are in this note. There's one comment. The arrow expands that note window down to where it basically gives me the same thing I would get if I actually opened the note. So I don't actually have to double click on the flag. I don't have to open the flag. I can expand my note so that I can write my comments right in here. So I'm looking at this place and I'm going to click on Acts 120 to go there. So James says, I recommend abode. So I, can, I can't edit the text. I can't edit the text because I don't have editing rights, but I could say, I agree. And I could assign it back. By default, it's going to assign back to the person who wrote me the note. When I click OK, then that note becomes part of the comment and the new line opens. If I'm looking at all of the unresolved notes, there is a little arrow in the top. Because this window is not big enough to see everything, but there's a double arrow. There's a double arrow up there, and if I click on the double arrow, then it will expand all the notes. It will expand all the notes, and so very quickly, I could go down this list of notes and add my comments. Okay, I could add my comments to each note. Now, if I add a comment and I leave the comment there, I don't do anything, Paratext is going to complain and say there are notes that haven't been handled. If I try to close my notes, it says the notes contains one or more notes with unfinished changes. I've made a change, but I didn't do anything. Okay, so it is David. I need to click OK to say that is my comment. I think it's okay. I can resolve that note if I want, but I have to do something. I have to either click okay, or I have to cancel my comment, or I have to resolve it. So until I res deal with each of the notes, deal with each of the comments, Paratext won't let me close it. Once I deal with it, I can close those notes or close paratext and go on. So one way to deal with notes is to simply look for the flag. And if you're working in a particular chapter, that may be fairly easy to see those flags. But one recommendation would be that you open up the notes window and you expand the notes. Now you can go through and work with those notes and again, if you filter it for the current chapter, you would see all the notes in the current chapter. One thing that I cannot do here is change the tag that I'm assigning to a note. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But go ahead and open up, open up the notes window. So go to File, Open Notes, so that you can see them if you haven't. Go to File, Open Notes. You might want to send and receive. If you've written notes, you might want to send and receive so you get the latest, the latest notes. Yep. yep. So change the filters. Change the filters so you can see how that window changes as you change the filter. Do a send receive so you make sure you get the latest notes.
if all you're doing is changing or adding comments to notes, then the number of notes won't change necessarily, but the number of comments on a given note may change. And you also may see that there's an unread note that was previously closed. What did you, Eureka? No, I was, I was only looking at the changes in on the on the resolve. Uh, the right, resolve. right, right. So you want to make sure you look at. So again, you can filter. You can find the notes that have been resolved. You can find the notes that are unresolved. You can find the notes that are assigned to you. Number of different options. And be careful when you write notes of a personal nature that are in a project that you realize everybody, even if it's assigned to you, everybody may read it. You know? um, again, realize that even if a note is assigned to someone, everyone on the project is going to be able to see that note. So yeah, I'm just here, I'm looking at recently resolved. Okay. You should have done one, right? And then um, I actually I think resolved mine in the ZZ test. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Again. One of the things about send receive is obviously the timing of send receive. So if, if you do send receive and then the other person does send receive, you need to do one more to make sure you get their changes. So again, it's a, a, back, a back and forth. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So if you click that, now you're in Matthew 1 1. If you click that, you'd be in Matthew 1 3. All my other yellows disappeared. All the other yellow here in these? Yeah. these? Because you've read them all. I did. Okay, and again, recognize that you're in unresolved in the current chapter. So if you go, if you change over here and say all books. I mean, that's what, you know, so here you're doing all books. That's why there's some that are unread still. So this means we both commented on, or there's You a conflict, you both edited the text yeah. in the same verse, okay? Conflict notes are a special type of note that show up in the same list that show you that you both edited the same verse. Okay. Look up here again, if you would. So this, this notes window is really, really valuable because this allows you to keep track of notes, and especially even if there's something in, in a place that you weren't expecting them to write a note, you can still find it. As I say, what I typically do is I would come in and set this filter the way I want it. If, if, if I want to normally just work in the current book, then I would set that filter so it's in the current book in terms of where I'm working, and then go to Window, Save Text Combination, so that when I open this text combination, that notes window will always default to open to the current book instead of current chapter. And it'll default to the notes being opened. Okay. Okay. But sometimes, even if you've set them to open, if you get a new note, you may have to go back and say, okay, let me close them and open them again so that they, they all the notes expand. So I may need to expand my notes. Ann? It depends a lot on your, again, your space. 
it depends on your space because I may I may say I don't want these to default to open because especially if we've got a series of comments we might have we might have a place where we've got six comments going back and forth so one note is going to fill the screen so I may not want them expanded initially I may want them all reduced so that I can just kind of see okay these are the places the verses are in order to get to a verse if I click the link that will take me to that place in the text if I hold shift then again it will open up a quick reference so holding shift when you're clicking on a reference is a is a good way if you wanted if you don't want to change where you were working in the text but you want to look at what was there you can hold shift and get to that point but again if you've got resources and things and you're wanting to compare it all then you probably need to go to that verse so that you see all of your resources. Ann? When you have them opened in a list like this, using the open notes feature there, you, um, that, that window cannot be moved out of pair text. Right. But if you open the flags individually, you can move that window out of pair text. Yeah. So if you're using two screens, you can't move this whole list onto another screen, but you can move an individual note that you open to a different screen. Good catch. Well done. Yeah. And so if you, you know, so I can move this, this, this window off. So if I want to have space to work on it, I can. So again, one of the... Th if this is hiding your resources because it's open, then you don't want it open. You want them individually right. open. So again, so, so all of these are issues that you have to figure out in terms of how you best work. Okay. How you best work. Um, for me, it, when I'm typesetting, normally I'm not really concerned a lot about all of the resources. I'm concerned about the text and maybe one resource, because often I want to compare it against the Reina Valera when they're saying we're changing this. I, I still may look and you know make some suggestions. But so I want to see these notes, because they're usually for me, these notes are saying, could you please, you know, we left off the period here, could you put the period in? Because in the typesetting stage, I'm the one who edits. So I may go back and, you know, edit the text. But so the notes, for me, the notes window is useful, and then we deal with those in resolving. Okay. When I open a note, and I can open it either by double-clicking the flag or by clicking the open link, and I can have multiple notes open at a given time, one of the options up here in the left is to change the tag. At the moment, I only have one tag type to do. This is a quiz. Where do you change the note tags? Where do you add note tags? Every time we got to figure this out. Project, properties, and settings is a place that allows us to create tags. And we talked about this the other day, that there, are, there is a, a push to say, you know what, let's come up with a standard set of maybe five or seven tags that we all agree on. The problem is trying to get everybody to agree on what five or seven tags would be and what, what the um, templates would be for those is, is not trivial. But for you as a consultant, you might want to consider that I have, you have a tag for grammar, and you have a tag for exegesis, and you have a tag for whatever. Maybe you want to have a tag just for encouragement, you know, however you want to call that. Good job. You know, you have the to-do tag, and you have the good job tag. And so to add a tag in here, the bottom I can click tag, now, why can't I add a tag on this project? Because I'm not the administrator. Okay, Jim is the administrator, so Jim can do it. So in each of these where you're sharing a project, only the project administrator can actually add the tag for this project. So you don't get the tra you don't get 500 translators adding tags in here. It's going to be done by the administrator. So the administrator can click add tag and say, let's add a tag called good job. You choose the 
choose the icon that you want, and you can fix that. Notice that there's an option here to restrict resolve. When you restrict resolve, by default it means that only the person who creates the note can resolve it or the administrator can resolve it. Okay? So if you restrict resolve, that, that helps you eliminate the fact that just anybody, so if the consultant writes a note, then the no, consultant is the one who would resolve it rather than the, if it's got that tag, okay, if the tag, if that particular tag is, is clicked as um, requiring resolve. Right, and so, so as Ann's saying, when you set up a list, by default, it's going to come up with the first tag. So whatever the first tag in the list is, that's going to become the one that defaults to. You have to intentionally choose and say, I want to use a different tag here. If you switch to a project that you have an administrative rights on, so you can see that. Tag. So if I go here and say, okay, I want to add a new tag, and I'm going to add a tag, and I'm going to call it good job. The icon, the icon can be changed. The top three layers are what you can choose from. So I could say for good jobs, I'm going to use the, the little note card that's a purple note card. The other colors here indicate that if I've chosen this, gray is going to, if it's assigned to somebody else, it'll be the gray, and if it's a resolved. But notice that the, once you choose, well, it's still actually there. Once you choose a note card, or once you choose a, a tag, uh, shape. once you choose a shape, that shape now disappears from the list. And also all the other colors in that shape. And all the other colors in that shape. So you can't have the same... Thing. So there's, you know, sort of by default, this is kind of your limit of tags. I think after that, then I think it just goes back and defaults to flags. Or so, you know, I can't remember how it defaults, but it, it does default to something. But this is basically what you have to work with. Okay. And again, you can come in and set a template. You could set a template that when you insert a note, when you insert a note and choose that tag, by default it's going to automatically put that template part in there, okay? And then you can add the rest of your note. So if you had a grammar note and you always wanted to start your grammar notes with a particular phrase or you just wanted to have some code that you put into the note, you could put that in the template so you don't have to remember, okay, let's see, did I say this is a grammar note or grammar notes this are or how did I say this? You can have the template fill that in. Okay. Again. So these tags will be for all the team? This will be for the whole team. Okay, this will be the whole team. Right. So you can, you can do a lot of different things. we got about 15 minutes, so take a look at what she's got there. This, this, one, this one has multiple colors on. I have another project that some, I asked for some tags to be set up because I didn't have the right to do it. And the person that set it up for me picked different shapes but all the same colors. You'd have to discuss with the team, do they like the different colors or do they not see them? Right. You know, I mean, for me, I prefer the colors, but maybe the team just prefers the shape. Maybe they don't even see anything. Right. I don't know. Right. But it still helps me because I categorize them. And if I want to see when I'm writing a report all the grammar notes I wrote, and I've got a tag that's marked for grammar, 
I can pull out all those grammar notes really quickly and make my report about the kinds of grammar things I'm focusing on. Right, because when we're, when we're in this notes window, when we're in this notes window, in the filter, you can say, show me all the good job notes or show me all the to-do notes, or, you know, so you can filter it down by notes. Also, when you're in the plan, when you're in the project plan, and you're looking at checks, you will see that notes, unresolved notes, you can actually say that all of the project notes, all the two note, no, to-do notes need to be resolved by the time you're in this stage. All of the good job notes need to be resolved or may not need to be resolved at all. And, and you, you may say none. I mean, if you categorize them and you use a different flag for um, punctuation or formatting I, or capitalization or something, I type it up basically goes under one, then you can say, as soon as you work, as soon as you've done this, Right. I don't need to see it again. right. And then other ones you might say I'm going to restrict the resolve so that they have to come back to me. Yeah. So so you you can again do very powerful things with this. The whole point is to communicate. This is all about communication. Okay? Now, there's another type of note that is called a consultant note which confuses people because they say, "Well, I thought I was writing consultant notes." I'm a consultant. I'm writing notes. Aren't those consultant notes? Okay. Well, there's a particular type of project that is called a consultant notes project, and you create that under new project by saying this is going to be a type of project called consultant notes. And so this is a special type of project that is strictly notes. That's all this is, is notes. There's no written text you're, you're working with. This is just a consultant note. So I choose consultant notes. I choose my language. I don't have to put books or anything because consultant notes are unrelated to those. And you'll notice that consultant notes are not registered. Okay? But I can send and receive consultant notes. So when you create a consultant notes project, what opens for me is PLT. Okay. PLT, and you'll notice that it looks just like my notes window for ZZ test. Okay, it's just a notes, it's just a, a notes. The way consultant notes work are very similar to regular notes in that if I see a word or phrase and I want to deal with it, I can click it and insert a consultant note. So instead of inserting a project note, like we did a minute ago, I insert consultant note. Now, you will only see this option to insert a consultant note. It'll be gray if you don't have, but if you don't have a consultant notes, it'll be gray. Once you have a consultant notes project, then this will allow you to do this. And when you click it, it'll say, well, which, here's your note. Now, if I have multiple projects, if I have multiple consultant notes projects, I could choose which one I want to send it to. Okay. I could say I want this to go to a particular project. I can send it to more than one. Okay. Okay. So by clicking on multi and saying I want to send this to these projects. So I write my note. I write my project note, my consultant note, and it's there. You'll notice there's no flag on the word God. Okay? Because by default, consultant notes are not specifically tied to a project by default. Okay? Consultant notes, the whole idea here really is more that this is a note that I'm writing for myself that whenever I'm looking at this particular verse, there's a concern that I have here and I want to make sure the team knows it. I don't necessarily want to send that note to the team right now. Okay? I'm not looking at sending the note. These are notes for myself as a consultant. 
I could share these with someone else who's consulting. So if Ann and I were consulting together with the team, we might share this project so that we could see these notes together and we could, we could work with them. But they're not, specifically, they're not specifically tied to a project. I could create one for a project and say, okay, I'm going to create a consultant notes project for ZZ Test 99. And I'm going to write all my consultant notes for ZZ Test 99 in that project. Things that I want to remember to do, things that I want to remember to bring up, but I don't necessarily want to put that in the notes for the team to see. The If you're doing research, this would be a place to put your research comments and things for that project in this note. Now, one thing that's different about these notes is that I can't assign them and I can't resolve them. Okay. I could put a different tag on it, so I could say, okay, create a done tag or something, and then I could say, okay, show me all the ones that are to do, not the ones that are done. Okay, so I can filter it and just see the ones that need to be worked on. So, but once I've written my, my consultant notes, I can click on any project, whether it's the one that I was looking at when I did this, or it's some other project. I can click on any project and say, view, show consultant notes, and choose that project, and it will put a flag, that, in this case it's the blue, blue cross, it will put the blue cross at the beginning of the verse where the note occurs. It doesn't highlight the text because it's not tied to the text. And this note could apply to any text. But so I can show it there. Now, the team doesn't see that. If I'm not sharing these notes with the team, the team doesn't see that. This is just, for me, so as I'm going down this text, I say, oh, wait a minute, here's a note in this verse. When I go to view consultant notes, there is also an option for global consultant notes. The global consultant notes are a set of notes that were created, have been created over time with information. So if I say, well, gee, I wonder what they said about this. If I double click on that, it actually opens up that notes window and says, okay, the Father of Mercy is the Merciful Father. Um, so I can see here that there are a ton of notes that have been written that somebody else has already written kind of an example of these are what consultant notes might look like. Okay? So you, you could use that as a reference for yourself. But a consultant notes is a specific type of project as opposed to notes that a consultant writes in a project. Okay. Two different two different things going on there. One way to use them might be that if you if you check a book for one language and then you're going to check it for another language, you might want to pull those up again and say, okay, what questions were relevant for this language? Um, they won't be the only questions, but right. they for you as a consultant, as you're working through and you say, okay, here's something that I want to look at, you might want to put that in a consultant notes project so that you can bring it up as you go through other projects, Neil? Uh, if you see that your note is not in the global consultant notes, you can send them in, and every six months or so, they'll update the global consultant notes if they feel that your note is worth, in, worth putting in. If you have a note that you think really should be included in the global notes for everybody, then you could do that process of, uh, of submitting. But, but in general, what we're talking about is, is you've got the notes that you're writing for yourself. And again, you can share this, especially we've got a number of situations where someone is doing, is learning, and so you're working with a, another consultant. So this is a place where, you know, the two of you can be sharing notes and seeing the same things that you're wanting to talk about but not necessarily wanting to discuss with the whole team yet. Then at some point, at some point you may then write a note in the project for the team to deal with. Okay. Okay. Now, one of the things that Mary asked is can you write this note to multiple projects? Let me go back to just talking about the project notes for a minute. 
So if I come in here and I say, okay, I want to write a note, and, and, I'm, and I'm working with several projects, and I know that all the projects are, are going to deal with this, you know, should this be Dios? Okay, we're not using God, should we, you know, you know, Yahweh should be Yahweh. Okay, I can send this to multiple projects. I can send this to multiple projects by clicking multi and writing that note and saying, okay, add it also to test 99. It goes to JW and also stick it in JACU8. Uh, and you could give it a name so that you don't have to do if, if, I'm, if I'm regularly sending to a group of texts, then I could save that text. Um, you know, call it my cluster. And so I could say, okay, so send it. So then all I have to do is pull it up and say, send it to the cluster. Thanks, Neil. So, so, so when I write that, a note went in to this text. If I go and switch to ZZ test, there's the same note. And if I open it, you'll notice that it says this note is in project ZZ test, ZZJW, ZZJCU8. Okay. So if I put it to 10 projects, I'm going to have this really long thing there that's going to say where it's going. Mary? Okay, now, one thing about the comments, is that only the first comment of any note gets sent to multiple projects, okay? So I can't, I can't send the secondary level to everybody, but if I, were, if I were writing a note to this and said, insert a note, is this correct and I want to send it to the cluster. Up here I simply choose what I saved, cluster, and it puts those names in there, send, and then that note is going to get applied to those. But it only, it only applies the first comment of a, of a note. So if I've got multiples, now if I'm in a note where there's been a back and forth discussion and I look at the first comment, I think, okay, that, I want to send that comment to another project, I could do that. And I click multi and it would send the first comment to the other notes, but it's not going to send all the secondary comments. Okay. The last thing here in notes is again to remember that when I'm on a note, if for instance the word mercy's got deleted, the note flag is going to probably jump to the beginning of the, the verse. So when I open that, my word was mercies, but it's no longer on mercies. There is an option to reattach the note to some piece of text. And so I can look and say, okay, I want to reattach that to comfort. And so now the note, when I click OK, the note is now attached to comfort. So I can reattach a note if some, and typically it becomes disconnected if the text has changed significantly, particularly if that text has been deleted. But if the note has been become detached, I can reattach it using that, that option. Any other comments about notes? All right, again, just a, when, when I look if I view global or consultant notes, it's going to show that the difference between a regular note is a regular note, when I double click it, it opens up the note window. If I double click a consultant note, it opens up that larger note window, because that's what that is. That's what that project is, it's just that larger set of notes. All right, we're going to stop here. Okay, to add a consultant note, very similar to the way I add a regular note, I look at the text, okay, I find the, the, the text that I want to comment on. 
I have to use insert consultant note because right clicking, right clicking doesn't have an insert consultant note. Okay, consultant notes can only be inserted from the main menu or the shortcut. So I insert the consultant note. It opens that same kind of a note window. I write my note. And again, I could also say I want to put those also in my cluster. Okay, and you'll notice that one thing that happens is a consultant note flag went to the beginning of the verse because I'm showing consultant notes there. So if I'm showing consultant notes, it's going to show up. And then because I shared it with that multiple project, it also put that note directly in my project. Okay, so if I wanted to you know, if I had a consultant note that I wanted to save for myself for future projects, but I also wanted to make sure that note went into the project right now, I could do that. What the no, the team well the team only sees the the only people who see the plus sign are the, are, are the people who have gone to view and show consultant notes and who happen to have that consultant note project. So Right now, I've not shared my consultant note project with any of you. So if you go to view, show consultant notes, the only thing you see is the global consultant notes. That, that's available, that's part of Paratext. So, so but, not everybody will see the notes that you're writing there, only those that you've sent it to. Unless I put it in the multiple things where I, in this case, I shared it with the project too. But so if I'm writing consultant notes, and I've not shared it with anybody, okay, because you have to be intentional in saying I'm going to share this with the team. If I don't share it with anybody, then the only person who's going to see those are going to be me. So, so you're assuming that you've already set up a project for consultant notes, right? Okay. Okay. But can you set up multiple projects for consultant notes for yourself? Not that you want to confuse yourself. You don't want to confuse yourself, and that's not generally the, the way it would be done. But I could come in here and say, okay, I want a new project, and I'm going to call it a consultant notes project. You'll notice that it actually gave it a name up there for me um, already. But I'm going to go edit the name and say this is um, ZZ Test 99 Consultant Notes. Okay. And Paratext just gave it a short name, Z, you know, but I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this consultant notes ZZ test. Okay, you can only have eight characters, so I'm going to stick it there. Consultant notes, ZZ test. And so now I'm actually creating a new consultant notes project. So now I have a new consultant notes project there. That's not the same one as the one I had. I could go into that project and in the project properties and settings under the notes. I could click and say, you know what, for that one, I want the, the flag to be purple flags or purple crosses or whatever tag. And I could add, again, I could add multiple tags here, just like I do in regulars. And I'll say, okay, so now if I come to this and I say insert a, insert a, ah, don't right click, stop right clicking, Phil. Insert a consultant note. By default, it, it's going to, to pick one, but I can choose and say, okay, I want it to be this one or I want it to be that one. So I'm going to say I want it to be that one. And so I write the note. Okay. Now, notice that there is no purple flag cross there yet. Okay, there's no purple cross here in verse 4 because I have to be very intentional and say show the, those consultant notes. When I show those consultant notes, then that flag shows up. It's not associated with any text. So I could say I want to go to the Reina Valera, and currently there are no consultant notes. But if I say View, Show Consultant Notes, ZZ and Test, then there that flag shows up for me. And so then, then as I'm looking at this, I can say, okay, there's my, there's my consultant notes, and I can see what I've written. Okay, so. 
again, it's a different way of looking. One of the advantages to it is that it is, does give me a set of notes that are not tied to a project. So even if I'm in another place, I can see those. And again, I can share these and say, okay, I really want Neil to see these notes as well, or I want Neil to contribute to these notes. Neil and I are both going to contribute to them, and so then we both have access to them. So it just it depends. Right. Right. It's going to depend entirely upon. It's going to depend entirely upon the language. And again, if you're working with a cluster, that may be very different from working from two totally unrelated languages that have uh, situations. All right. Let's let's stop here. We're going to take a break for. 50, we'll go ahead and take a break for 15 minutes. So we'll come back at 20 after. Um, my wife is not here today, so I'm the one doing snacks. And so I've done the snacks. <laughs> there they are. There they are. So feel free, feel free to take them carefully. Some of the bags may have uh, spilled stuff, so feel free to take things out of the bags. And um, let me shut this. Let me shut this down. Yes. Would you? I would be glad. I would be glad to have you help and and kind of get that done. I'll go get some waters.